Okay, now we can start. <laughs> Welcome everybody, I hope you had a good lunch and you don't fall asleep. And there we go. <laughs> um, I'm not going to introduce myself. If you have any questions about who I am and what I do, I'll be running around. So try and catch me if you have a question about that. The presentation is PHP Storm for Developers. Who doesn't know what PHP Storm is? Good. Um, PHP Storm is an IDE that can be used for a million things. Myself, I'm a developer, so I use it as a developer, but I've seen front-enders use PHP Storm with a million options that I've never even seen or heard of or have any use for. So that's why my session is called PHP Storm for Developers and not just PHP Storm, because I'm really focusing on the um, tools that I use myself. So I'm starting with my introduction that I just started. PHP Storm, it's a Swiss pocket knife, Swiss army knife, how you would like to use it. It's more, even more, and even more, 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 because there's so many functions in there that um, I don't even know. I think I'm doing a wild estimate that I'm maybe using 10% of the options. Maybe it's less, maybe it's more. Um, if I could redesign the menu, so it's only the function that I use, the menu would be like, two or three options from the 500 that are there now. Anybody got it? No. Um, so yeah, it's PHP Storm is really a tool for a developer or front -ender. Uh I would say it's a tool for professionals. If you're trying to build your website in Dreamweaver and you want to switch to PHP Storm, it might not be the first step uh, to make. So what are we talking about? What kind of features? Uh, sorry? <laughs> For notepad. Oh, that's a good step too. <laughs> well, I have to say, we were talking about it just before this presentation started, that next to the system, I do use Notepad 2 or Notepad++. Plus plus. <laughs> because um, in my work, I work with very large CSV files. PHP Storm is not a tool for that. There's a tool for every job, and Notepad Plus Plus or Notepad 2 are very lightweight and can handle such files much better. What do I do with PHP Storm or the functions I use? Uh, it's basically top 2, 4, 6, 7 that I have here. Deployment is one of the options where you can send your files to a remote server. Uh, Git integration, because I use it a lot for the Joomla project and since then also for my own projects uh, in combination in my case with github bitbucket and me are not a happy marriage so i kind of lost that but you can also use it for if you're running your own git server because it just has the functions functions to work with git the other thing i use quite regularly is starting ssh sessions from within php storm so i don't have to bring up a terminal and connect there's a button for that in PHP Storm. Scopes. Uh, scopes is the PHP Storm works basically for filters. When you're developing a Joomla extension, you have your whole Joomla tree. You have administrator, components, scope, and then the whole list you need to find your own component. And then, of course, you have a front end where you have to do the whole same thing. With scopes, you can make a filter that says only display these directories and or files. So, I'll show it in the demo later. So when I select my scope, I just get to see those files. I don't have to go through the whole tree anymore just to find this one file that I want to edit. And of course, as any good developer, I use a real debugger other than print R, um, unless I'm forced to use print R. But the debugger in PHP Storm is amazing. Um, I use it in connection with Xdebug. It doesn't support, it supports the send debugger as well but I have never tried it because my setup works. Uh, with the debugger, you can place a marker in your code, and when you load the website, PHP Storm, together with Xdebug, will stop the process and show you the line where you set your marker, and you can walk through your code and see what values everything has. Uh, it has helped me a lot yesterday with um, hacking our tickets for the trademark team to uh, make a change for them there that they wanted. The RESTful web service, there's a whole REST interface in PHP Storm that has helped me again for testing REST services. <coughs> in my case, I have an ex 
extension that uh, communicates with the, the banks in the Netherlands for Dutch payment system. And so to test their REST service, I could just use, I was using a browser plugin and it didn't work very nice. And then I found out, hey, this is also a PHP store. So I tried it out and it works wonderful. And finally, uh, after a year of pushing and pulling the JetBrains team, they have started integrating or adding Joomla support to PHP Storm. When you start a new project in PHP Storm, you get to see if you can start a Drupal project. I don't know that. I can start a WordPress project. I don't know that either. And there's a whole list of other ones. And since not the last release, this was a security release, if you're using PHP Storm and you have not updated yet, update it, because there's a serious security issue in there. But the release before that, they released a PHP Storm with initial Joomla support, which I'll describe a little bit later. So the first item on my list was deployment. This is a feature that I use basically in every project. Deployment, um, in PHP Storm you get deployment and there's a lot, some options that I'm going to show now. Because just telling you what it does is probably not as much as showing you what it does. That was the... Oh, you guys see nothing. Oh, yeah. I think I turned it off to get this, uh, this one. So the, uh, the deployment is a function that can be found under tools. As you can see, there's a whole list, but it's uh, in the bottom section. We have deployment. Uh, there's a couple of options there. The first one that you start with is the configuration. And that is where you configure where uh, your files are going to. There's a couple of different options. PHP Storm can communicate with external resources through FTP, FTPS, SFTP, local or mounted and in place. The local or mounted and in place is actually when it's on your own computer, but maybe in another folder. Well, this is one I did yesterday. Um, this is one that is local, because I have a copy of the website on my laptop. Because if you want to use a debugger, uh, you can use remote debugging, but it's a bit of a hassle to set up. So if you have a copy locally, uh, it's a lot easier. So you just have your local path. In this case, it's users rolling the htdocs. tm is for the, the folder name where Joomla lives. And the web path is tm. And PHP Store will tell you what the project URL is for the whole thing, uh, the local host, and MTM. This is a connection to an external server. As you see, I selected the secure FTP, the domain name, port, the path, uh, your username, and password. Uh, what I use also on some sites is you can use a key pair. So you don't even need a password anymore, you just have your certificates to connect with the server. But that depends whether you have the uh, possibility to do that on the server or not. This site has only, uh, so the mappings looks like this if you have only one mapping. And that's if you map the whole local website to the whole online website. But what you can also do, have, um, let me see. You can have uh, mappings to different locations. Let me see if I have that set up here or not. So this is a project where I have two mappings. And I will explain them. 
So the name of this extension, as you can see, is <coughs> the ideal gateway, where I have my local path to my uh, component locally, and the deployment path is the uh, path on the server where the extension is installed. So I can work locally, but then as soon as I stop typing, the HP store will also always automatically save your file, and it sends it automatically to the server. So if you have a bit of a fast connection, it's almost like you're working locally. The second line is for uh, the extension with, uh, that I have written for RS Forms Pro, which lives in a different folder uh, locally and a different folder uh, on the server. So I have a second uh, mapping that tells me to Take the whole thing from htdocs, jdidogate, source, plugins, rsforms pro and it will simply put it on the server and plugin system as jdid. Um, this is my traffic laptop, so not my regular work laptop. On this project at home I think I have like 60 mapping set up because I export like 25 extensions and there's like two folders per extension and then my own component. But it works amazing. So um, if, you have, if you're developing a component or you're dealing with a website with several different plugins, modules, you can all map them uh, that way. And that works amazing. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, and it makes life easy. That's for later. <coughs> so what's more in there in deployment? The one thing that you want to do is the operations logging. The operations logging is basically when PHP store copies a file to a remote server, it will have a little log line that tells you what it did. Standard is brief and it just says, I copied one file. And then you're checking and your change is not reflecting on the website that you're working on, so you wonder why. So you you check your code and you do your code again and after five times your code, you're sure your code is good but it's still not working. Then I found out I can put this on uh, details. What happens with details, PHP shows up, I copied one file from here to here. When I saw the whole path, I saw that my mapping was set up wrong, so it was sending it to a completely different folder. If I had known this before, it would have saved a lot of time. So that's basically one of the standard things I do uh, with details so you can have good control over where your files are going. Um, the other option at the bottom is automatic upload. By default, it's off as well, um, which means that PHP Store doesn't send the file directly to the server when it saves the file. If you're confident that's okay for your project, you can turn it on. Um, otherwise, you have to do it manually every time. Like one reason you can have it off for certain projects if you're sometimes <coughs> working on a live site while you shouldn't, but it really needs to be fixed today, then this is a bit safer to have it off so you can check locally before you push it. And the browse, the browse remote host, if you click that, it sets up an FTP connection to the server um, it's also the same option that if you're working in a project for one customer, your other customer calls you like, it must be fixed now, something is wrong, you can add uh, a new server and make a quick FTP connection and work with the file for the PHP storm. So you don't have to leave the project and make a new project, you can simply uh, set up an FTP connection to whatever server or location you want to work on it. But then the, the remote file is synced again with the local file? No. Uh, the option is there. You can uh, sync files, but that's a manual command. I can show you that as well. If I have it set up here. You have here to synchronize. Um, I think I better, I'll take the other project. So you have here the, um, the upload to JDID new, 
It's there because I have said this is my default server. If you don't set a default server, you get the upload to dot dot dot. Uh, and then if you click that, it will ask you to which server do you want to push. Uh, you also have then the synchronize for synchronizing the servers. And <coughs> and it's basically these grayed out commands here, they are also available when you have your remote server set up. Because it's not only for syncing, it's also if you want to compare files that are locally and what, that are remote. Well, this is what I said, see what's happening, turn on detailed login. It would be nice if it's on by default, but uh, it's off by default. It only says that they copied something. But uh, yeah, if you use PHP Storm, this is something that I turn on always. Uh, this is the one I just said. If you have more than one server to push through, it will say upload to dot dot dot. The dot 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 in PHP Storm always means you can click it and there will be a selection for whatever uh, context you're in. The pop-up is always context sensitive. In this case, I can choose if I want to push it to the JDNL server or to the PBF server. Um, you'll notice if you work more projects, the list will get longer and sometimes you have to clean it up. So setting up an SSH connection. As I said, uh, PHP Storm has an SSH terminal that you can use. There's two ways uh, you can connect. PHP Storm will show automatically all the servers that you have set up with an SFTP connection or with a secure connection. So you don't have to enter the details again. You can also enter credentials if you have that customer calling or something else that you want to connect somewhere that you have not set up a remote connection yet, you can enter the details. And I'll show that as well. Uh, <coughs> you have here in the menu it's called start SSH session. Dot dot dot. And in this case you see I have two servers set up that I can connect to or I can enter the credentials. If you choose uh, to enter your credentials, you basically get the same screen as when you set up a remote host. It's the same thing as with any program. It, it needs the host, the port, the username, uh, whether you have a password or a key pair, or, or pair, key pair which nowadays uh, can be both OpenSSH or PuTTY, so you don't have to convert it yourself anymore. Um, now let's start and see if it works, the PBF server. And now I'm logged in into the Joomla PBF server through SSH and I can do whatever I want to do there. Although Yes is not going to be happy with me if I do a RM, RF slash mm -hmm. and he can start again. You're distorting it, right? Uh, not everything. Uh, so you see also this has tabs. All these, most of these windows have tabs in PHP Storm. So this server is Joomla PBF. You can connect to multiple at the same time as, as you wish. Um, another option is the, the little wheel because down there is a very small box by default. But you can choose for the um, floating mode and then you can have a full screen just like iTerm on the Mac or whatever terminal that you use. Now let's close this connection. One more. Oh. <coughs> so that's something that... So setting up an SSH connection straight out of uh, the PHP store. You don't even have to leave when you're working on a project something I use quite regularly as well.
navigating. Uh, as you see, PHP Storm has a lot of windows. You have your main edit window, you have your tree on one side. Well, the tree starts automatically on the left, but I like it on the right. So that's why you can see it on the right in my screen. Uh, you have your bottom where you have your debug and everything else. So, as I said, PHP Storm has, for what I, I didn't count them, but I think they've got like a million functions in there. And I always forget where they are, but we can find them under one button. Command Shift A or Control Shift A if you're on, uh, on the Windows. You get this pop up box called Enter Action or Option Name. Um, if I want to reformat my code, it will give me that. <coughs> if I want to start an SSH session, just type SSH and you get that. So, whatever function you're looking for, you can type it in there and it will give you everything related to that. So, not just a function, but maybe also a configuration option that needs to be set or can be set. This is one that, that I use non stop because. Um, I am not much of a mouse person, I am really more a keyboard person, so everything for me is shortcuts and, and this is perfect because it's an easy uh, key combination and you just type whatever action you want and you're ready to go. Another one that I use all the time, um, you can see this is from the Dutch Joomla de Netherlands because they did not translate this title. <laughs> uh, it's called uh, Quick switching and how you go quickly from file to file. If you press the command E or uh, control E on Windows, you get this pop up which shows you the recent files that you have used. Um, because again, your main window has at the top the files that you have used recently, but I think there's only like five file names that fit up there. Um, but this will give you the whole list for the last 20, 30 files. <coughs> and the one thing that is very beautiful in PHP Store, pretty much any list that you have, you can just start typing and it will filter it automatically. I'll show you how that works. So it's this one. Um, there's one at the bottom that I want. I just do this. And then you can press enter and it will open. In this case, it's an image. Um, so yeah, the f this I use a lot because most of the lists that we're using are always long. Um, so whether I press the, the arrow key to go down, it's probably faster to type part of the name of the file because you know that anyway. And once you start typing and it filters, if you want to get out of it, just press escape and it go back to what it was. Um, yeah, so this is the recent files and that uh, that is used a lot because the toolbar up there where the mouse is moving, as I said, it's maybe five, six files that fit up there depending on the file name. In a general project that I work with, it's 10, 20 files that you're constantly changing and switching. I did translate this one. <laughs> uh, but this is actually another one. It looks very similar. Um, it has some files on the side, but on the left side it has more of the uh, tabs that are available within PHP Storm. So you have your terminal tab, your remote host tab, all the kinds of tabs, and this is invoked with the control tab. The difference is uh, not only that it doesn't have all the files there, but also with control tab, as soon as you let go, it will jump away. So it's even quicker to switch. <coughs> Um, but I don't use this this much. The, when I use this a lot is when I compare it to files because you can. Um, oh, why am I talking when I can show you? Especially on a small screen like this, you don't have that much screen space. You can split your window vertically or horizontally, so then you have them side by side. Uh, let me do it this way. So if I want to switch from the right hand to the left hand side, you see I can now type here. I do the control tab and I'm on the other one. 
So that's how it can switch really quickly. And if you keep tabbing, you can go to all the other ones. Oh, this is the terminal we were before. The only thing with the terminal is most of your shortcuts don't work anymore because they're being caught by the terminal rather than by the uh, IDE itself. But so that's the quick switching that is there as well for when you, at least in my case, when I have them side by side. Like for the language files, I usually create a Dutch because that's my native language and an English language file. And I need to sync them <coughs> or align them. Then this is an easier one because with the, wind, uh, with the other switcher that I showed before, you can stay in the same side of your screen. So it doesn't switch over back and forth. So these are the scopes I just talked about. Now I print some. The scopes, uh, that's why I said see what you want to see. Um, and again, I'll show you instead of blabbering <coughs> about it. The scopes are, uh, uh, you have your document tree. In this case, um, for you guys on the right hand side as well. And if you have any scopes defined, they'll show up here with, with your own name. There's no scope here, so I can create one. The little annoying thing is, if you don't have any scopes, there is no edit scopes option in this list. <laughs> so sometimes you can find it here, and sometimes it's not there. I haven't figured out what the logic is behind it. But then we have this one that I said before, the Control Shift A for any option, and you have edit scopes. Is it coming? That one. So as you see, there's, it says no scopes. Everything within PHP Storm, there's a plus and minus, a duplicate and a delete. Uh, I know from experience that if you want to duplicate, be a little careful because you're, uh, I tend to click the delete button <laughs> and there is no backup of that. So whatever you delete it, you have to recreate it. You have the scopes, they come in two flavors, local and shared. Well, since I'm a sole developer, I don't really use the shared. Well, I just don't use it. Uh, but you could do this uh, for scopes if you're working on a project with other people. PHP Storm allows you to put a file in your Git uh, that other people can check out and PHP Storm can read. So you can share the scopes uh, among your project team members. So in my case, I always choose local. It wants a name, well, of course. And then it shows the whole uh, document tree like you have in your edit screen. And there you can select files or not. So for example, I want this whole folder included. I don't have to include every folder and file individually. Just say include recursively and you'll see it will turn all green that you included it. Now let's say I do not want the SQL files because they're not useful for development. You can exclude them. So you get that whole tree except this part. Um, yeah, so you can, the front end, well, let me say I want the models from there as well. And when you're done, you can click apply or okay. <coughs> and now it will show up here. And I only get the files that I selected. So, as I said before, when you have a whole Joomla project, this is a lot easier because you can just select. I actually even break it up further. I have one scope for my backend files and one scope for my frontend files. Um, for my plugins, you can have a separate scope again. So, yeah, this is another feature I use heavily. <coughs> Editing. Oh, that's why we use PHP Storm as well, that because we want to edit files. 
Now just look at the pretty pictures it can show. This is a feature that I discovered in the 1980s. Uh, says something also about my age. It's column selection mode. Usually when we select text, when you have your cursor on the line and you go down and you hold the shift and it selects the whole line. Well, you don't always want that. Uh, sometimes you actually have, like in this example, an array where you want to type the same thing on the same line. And that I will show as well. Um, I need this first. Depending on your operating system, it's um, it's a different key combination altogether for this. On the Mac, it's Command Shift Eight, and on the Windows, it's Alt Shift Insert to get the uh, column mode. But now I can do something like this. Um, A, B, C. One, two, three. And what is also nice is if you have something like this, let's say this is longer, but you want to add something to the end, you can again <coughs> control the um, column selection mode and you can jump to the end. And you notice the cursor will split. It's not seeable, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it is. Okay. You can see that uh, the cursor split in two. One is at the end of the line for the first line, the other one is at the end of the second line. And you can still type in both lines at the same time. So uh, I use this quite regularly, especially with arrays that are, and arrays usually differ in length. I find this a very handy feature. And then if you turn off the selection mode again, you'll see what you usually get when you select. It will go over multiple lines all the way to the end and include the beginning. Same key for turning it off. Same, same key uh, for turning it off. And you can use this with multiple uh, arrays, so not just two, but also ten. Yeah, as, as long as you screen it, yeah. even longer. <laughs> this is something I don't really use, but I, I found I found it when I was uh, trying to be a CSS guru. Um, I failed. I failed, of course. <laughs> Remco is here and I told him I did some CSS uh, attempt and I had a black border and he said black border are for funeral advertisements. <laughs> um, I still haven't fixed that. Uh, already? I, 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 I haven't. I haven't as yet. I'll do that later. Let's see, where's my CSS guide? So in PHP Storm, when you do CSS files, even as a developer I sometimes have to touch those. You get, uh, if you have colors in the gutter, it will show what color is set with the um, hex code. And what you can do, you can click on that thing and there you get your color picker. Now for me it's very handy because I never remember the hex code and well, you can do whatever you want here. Um, yeah, just something I found in, found in like, oh that's nice to put in there. Another feature that I'm very, very fond of, uh, some call it code snippets, uh, PHP Storm calls them live templates. Live templates are a little bit of code that you have to repeat over and over and over again. Uh, PHP Storm allows you to make a template where you put a little bit of code and you assign some letters or a word that you like and it will spit out that whole code for you. The one place I use it a lot is for documenting my code. Something developers are notorious for not doing, for adding doc blocks to their functions and classes. It's every time four letters for me and I have my doc block. And I'll show you. Um, I think it is in this. So this doc block, um, 
Uh, you all saw what happened, right? I typed five letters, four letters, then you hit the tab, and it will expand those letters to whatever template you have. It's now blinking uh, white, and there's a little red stripe next to it. The little red line means it's a placeholder. I can type something there. So this is a file, and then I can hit tab, and it will jump to the next placeholder. So that way I get to fill in all the required fields for that specific place. It shows where you defined that. That will come in a second. Um, so yeah, you can define as many placeholders as you want. Well, the dog blocks luckily don't need too many. And so I have a, um, so this live template for dog blocks, I have one for the file, I have one for the class, one for the variable, and one for the method. My code is all documented. It might not be the, the quality of the documentation is something else, but at least they are there. So live templates. Go ahead. Why are you not using uh, the code generation to generate the PHP blocks through PHP Storm itself? Because they don't use the Joomla coding standard. That is being worked on, but it doesn't work yet. Is it somewhere here? Uh, I think because I have a doc block, it doesn't show. Because that's another thing, if you have, um, uh, for example, we have a function here, and if I add a variable to it, it will underline and say it's not defined or not used. It has the option, if you press Alt-Enter, to update the PHP doc comment, and it will add it in there. And it completely messed up my doc block, according to the Joomla code style. So I don't use that function at the moment for the Joomla stuff, but it can put it in there. Uh, same as the exceptions, it says throws exception. When your code does, or if your doc block is missing that, PHP store will tell you, well, it's throwing an exception, uh, it's not in your doc block, do you want me to add it? If you say yes, it will, in this case, as you can see, it will put it above the since tag, but according to the Joomla code, so it should be below it. So that's one weak point, uh, why I don't use the PHP Storm features for updating my doc block. <coughs> Live templates. Uh, How do you get the help with that? Uh, Command Shift A. I have made my own section. It comes by default with a lot of uh, live templates, but I only use the ones I create because those are the ones I can remember. Uh, I made a separate section for Joomla because these are all Joomla specific ones. I have the DBQN, database code name. Uh, the more interesting one is this one, is the get query. It's, it's just a full line of code where you t uh, type in the command. So if I want to make a new one, again here you have the plus, the minus, the duplicate. <coughs> when you click on the plus, you get two options. If you want to make a live template or a group. Now think of the groups as like uh, categories. Uh, we're going to make a new one. Uh, this is the new screen. First thing it wants you to do is to tell you what kind of abbreviation do you want to use. Yeah, now you can give it a description. The description is not used anywhere, uh, but it's just for you to see when you're looking through the list what it might be about. And this is actually the important block. The template text, this is where you're going to put the, uh, the code part or whatever part you, this can be CSS, can be anything. This is where you're going to put it in. Uh, print R. The purple part, the dollar, very dollar, that is the placeholder. The, the, the name there is completely uh, random, or you can choose what you want. There's no, uh, there are no fixed names. You can give it whatever name you want. 
The last thing that you need to do, which is very important, that's why it's in the red text, it means watch out, no applicable context yet. What it means is that if you're working in your file, PSP Storm has no clue, does it belong to a PSP file, a CSS file, a Ruby file, a Python file? Uh, so you click on the define, and then you get the whole list, whether it's HTML, XML, types of XML, JSON, now in my case it's always a PHP. And then it will change applicable in PHP. And when I'm typing in a PHP file and then use this shortcode, it will offer me that as an option. Well you can select multiple if you want, but there needs to be at least one. If you have uh, defined the context as a PHP uh, HTML file and you're in a PHP file but not within this bracket of PHP, can you use it? Can you use the HTML bit? Uh, don't know. We can find out. I have just selected HTML as well. well. Now they're involved, so now probably it always works. But I think. Uh, yeah. Um, I'll check that later. All right. <laughs> so the other thing is, depending on whether you need it, it's you have to reformat according to code style. Uh, it's more about the spaces should be tabs or the tab should be spaces. Uh, issue that we always have. Um, I always check reformat according to style, so then I always know it's okay. So if now I'm here, I can type job. Oh, it does actually show the description at the end. And it's, it's the only one that matches now. And you see it put in the print R, and then it starts blinking, and you can type whatever variable you want. And I should put a semicolon at the end. So now you said, what if we have HTML but no PHP? Because I think what you're getting at, in Joomla we have the template files, which are mixed content actually. This is another feature in Joomla, of, uh, in, Joomla in PHP Storm. Uh, it's called scratch buffers and scratch files, which is basically what it is. It's a scratch pad where you can quickly do something. Um, the difference between the buffer and the file is, is that the file will give you uh, code highlighting and the buffer is just plain text like notepad. So this is, as you see, it's already highlight, highlighting what I'm typing here. No. Yes. Ah. <laughs> so that works. Right. It's actually that smart. So yeah, the live templates is something else that I use a lot, especially with the doc box and the database queries I write a lot. Um, that you saw that the get queries, all line dollar query is this db get query. Getting tired of it, so I type gq tab and it's there. And templates are also projects. Yes, they are. Define yeah, you can also export them, and if you want to import them somewhere else. I believe you can even share these across your team members as well, but I haven't really looked into that feature because I'm a team of one. It always works for me. Code inspection. Uh, in Joomla, when we create code, it must adhere to the Joomla coding standards. Uh, I know some of the rules by heart now, but, long, but by far not all. Uh, PHP Storm will help me do that for me. You can um, have Joomla inspect your file for not only coding standards but also for typing mistakes and everything else. So that's the next demo.
As you can see, I'm using this all the time because it's just so much faster. I just know I want to inspect my code, I type inspect and it's there. It's a, it's a pop-up with a bunch of options. Uh, one is if you want to inspect the whole project. I have not really found any use for it because I know I'm going to get a list about much longer than this. And if I want to fix them, it's too long. It's better to do it part by part. Uh, uncommitted files that is useful if you're working in a kit project and you have new files that are yet to be committed. Actually, the one I use most is just simply the file that I'm at. And the final option there is custom scope. And you'll see that uh, it's the same list as we sort of saw before. <coughs> and it also has your custom scopes there. So you can have it inspect as part of your uh, source tree that you're actually working on without having to deal with the whole project. So we're going to inspect this one file. And it finds a bunch of issues. Um, architectural issues, no more than three arguments recommended. This is very theoretical. But uh, like this is, is much more interesting. It says that I have deprecated classes in my code. Which basically means I shouldn't be using them. Uh, because in the next version of Joomla, or maybe the one after, JR will be completely removed. Which means I'll have a bug in my code. PHP Storm warns you for that. Uh, another one is the syntax error. It has an unexpected identifier and an unexpected bracket. It gives you the files here and it tells you a little bit more in the window next to it where you can click on the line number and it will jump there. And it actually finds I put some code in a place where it doesn't belong. Uh, and the list goes on. Spelling. There are things there that you cannot change. Uh, J input, it is what it is. So the one thing you can do if you want to get rid of this, build your own dictionary. You can just tell PHP Storm, add it to my dictionary and be done with it. Or disable spell checking. Well, that depends because if you, make, if you do make a mistake in your variable name, um, you're not going to notice. Yeah. So. That's a, this is a bit of the love-hate relationship <coughs> with, with the spell checker. It tells you when you did a mistake in your uh, spelling your uh, right It does spell. tell you at the moment you type it, if you see it. Yeah, but under the right side also. The, this bar. Yeah. Yes. The red one is there and the, all those uh, colors. Yeah, every color is something. You can also look here, it says there's five errors, three warnings, 22 weak warnings found and 106 typos. Uh, from my experience, yes, it tells me, but I don't always see it. Because especially in Joomla files, you often get a lot of warnings there. It's a bit of the problem that we need to clean up the code. Forget something, um, <coughs> if you change your code and you're like, oh crap, it doesn't work. I want to go back uh, to my old version and I'm not using Git because Git will come later and we'll do it tomorrow, mañana, mañana. Luckily, PHP Storm will remember it for you. PHP Storm keeps track of pretty much everything you're doing with a file. <laughs> It's the, called the local history. And uh, let me show the history, and this is what it will show you. That seven minutes ago, I made a change here. So this is the old, uh, the old version, and this is the new version. It will tell me I put a print far there. Uh, eight minutes ago, I uh, deleted the dog block. And what is nice is, you can see there's a little arrow there. You can click it and it will add it to your file. 
You can also do it the other way around uh, by removing it again. <coughs> so it's basically a little bit of Git, but then locally in your installation. Without setting or after setting stores the history? Oh, it saves the history all the time. All the time. And there is no saving in PHP store. There's actually a save, but it does it it's automatically. It's automatic when you save. Yeah. You don't need to do it. You can do a save all if you want, if you do command S or control S, but it's all actually already done. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's, it has a hiccup, then your file and your memory content is out of sync. Yeah. The only, I don't know where you can install the Git file from the Git 